In Zechariah, it says, Sing and rejoice, O daughter Zion, for lo, I will come and dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall join themselves to the Lord on that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in your midst. Be silent, all people, before the Lord, for he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. As we're getting ready to start the worship service, we usually just have a moment of quiet as we reflect on the the prelude um, and the song that gets us and just preparing our hearts to worship. Let's prepare our hearts as we hear this song, Dwelling in Beulah Land. Thank you, Diana. And good morning, everybody. My name is Joel Robinette. I'm the pastor here at Kieseltown United Methodist Church. We're so glad to have the In Motion Summer Praise Dance team with us here today. And they're going to share with us um, the mini ballet that's coming up. And right now I'm forgetting. It's always been you. Remind us of God's presence that's always with us. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for all their family members and who are getting them here today. We just thank you all for being here with us. Um, Welcome everyone who's worshiping with us at home. If you want to sign the virtual connection card to let us know, uh, please go ahead and and sign that today too. Some announcements coming up today. Um, Let's see. This coming Saturday, we're going to have an ice cream social, and everybody's welcome. If you're helping make ice cream, be here about 4 o'clock. We'll make ice cream here at the church. 7 o'clock, invite your friends, invite your family, neighbors. Just time of fellowship for our community and some good ice cream together. So that's this coming Saturday night. Um, Next week on Sunday is Undie Sunday. So we're going to collect underwear and socks for children and youth for the Mission Central Children's Clothing Closet. Uh, So... One, one Undie Sunday announcement years ago, I said, I don't mean wear your underwear to church, and then I had to think about it. I had to think about it. I said, no, do wear your underwear to church. Do wear your underwear to church. That, that's what we're remembering. It's good to have it. So, uh, so next Sunday, if you want to bring new underwear for uh, children and youth in our community, uh, please do so. Um, this morning, I sent out an email with some specific sizes that are needed. Um, if you didn't get didn't get that and you want that, let me know. I'd be happy to send you an email. Linda Liskey's here today. She knows some of those sizes. If, if you want to know some specific sizes uh, for boys and girls, young men and young women for the children's clothing closet. Undie Sunday next week. Um, Sherry has an announcement for us this morning. 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 I was reading something and I found out that today is Happy Friendship Day. And this statement said, a good friend is like a four-leaf clover, hard to find and lucky to have. This is an Irish proverb, so just happy Friendship Day. A reminder, we also have been, or I had announced a few weeks ago, that we were also stuffing our Kieseltown United bus in the back with school supplies. And we are sending those also to the children's clothing closet. And I recently received a message, kind of secondhand, 
but Artie Frederick, who's the director of the clothing closet, indicated that a grandmother and a young grandson had come in uh, and the little boy needed some school supplies. And I had already taken a few things out, but they were able to share some school supplies with, with this little boy. And Artie said how happy they were and the grandmother and the little boy both gave her big hugs. So we can see that this is definitely a need. So I encourage us through the rest of the month, if you are interested in donating, uh, put supplies back in our school bus. Uh, I have also sent out a challenge to uh, the other uh, United Women in Faith units within our district uh, to also collect supplies and that could be used and shared uh, at the children's clothing closet. So I wanted to let you know that as well. So thank you so much. Sherry, any other announcements this morning? All right, well, I'd like to invite you to, um, let's stand together for our call to worship. You can find that printed in our bulletin, and we'll read this responsively this morning. Even when our faith falters, O oh Lord, we will not let you go. Even when we are bruised by this world of yours, O oh God, we will not let you go. Now, more than ever, O oh Lord, we need a blessing. We will not let you go. Bless your people, O oh God, as you bless Jacob before us. And let's pray together. Eternal God, in the midst of our fears and doubts, you call us home. Be with us on our journey when our faith wavers and we seek safety in our own clever schemes. Stay with us when we have need of you, O oh God, and bless us in our struggles that we might be a blessing to others. Amen. Then I'd like to invite us to pass the peace and welcome of Christ to one another here this morning. Just when some of you are getting comfortable, I'm going to invite you to stand on the promises. We're going to sing in the red hymnal number 374. As you're able, let's stand and sing together.
Amen. You all may be seated. Diana Davis is coming to read our Old Testament lesson from Genesis chapter 32. If you want to follow along in your pew Bible, you can open to page 30. <laughs> we all need some reminders. We all need some reminders. <laughs> At least I kept the right glasses once I waited. <laughs> all right. Genesis 32. 22 through 31. And it is entitled, Jacob Wrestles at Peniel. The same night... He got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob. But Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called to place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face. And yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his limp. May God bless the reading and hearing of this, his holy word. Thanks be to God. Yeah, let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for your wonderful words of life today. Lord, as you wrestled with Jacob, uh, give us faith to wrestle with all that you would have in our lives. In the grace and mercy and joy of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, one thing we see in this passage is God who wrestles with us. Not a God who just stays up in heaven or a God who's busy with other things, but a God who comes down right where we are um, and wrestles. Uh, we definitely see this later in the scriptures in Jesus Christ. Jesus who comes and isn't afraid to get his feet dirty. Um, Jesus who comes and when there's hunger nearby, wrestles it with it, feeds the hungry. When there, there are those who are on the outside, Jesus wrestles with it and he brings them in. When Jesus sees those who are sick or have leprosy, Jesus isn't afraid to go and touch them and heal them and make them well. When there are people who don't understand God, who don't believe, Jesus is not afraid to go and wrestle and teach and invite them along in the journey to know the salvation and light of God who is with us. Um, so God who comes and wrestles with us. Uh, when God does this, when God will come and tussle with us, we shouldn't be afraid to wrestle with God. And I think it's safe to say that some of you here are not afraid to wrestle. Um, I know it from you all. I remember myself when I was a really little guy. It didn't matter that my parents were ten times my size or my older sisters were much, much bigger than me and stronger than me. More I wasn't afraid to go and wrestle with them or get down on the carpet and the floor and go all over the room with them. Um, we've got some awesome young ladies here today um, who, when it comes to dancing, weren't afraid to wrestle and learn all that. Not just learn how to dance and move some, learn some moves, 
but with music. And not just on their own, but in coordination with others. Not just in coordination with others, but wrestling with schedules in summer and how to go to different churches and give their time uh, to be in ministry, to pull together, learn to dance and move with the songs and the music and the ministry together. Uh, not only them, we've had parents and grandparents and, and others in their family wrestling with them probably this whole summer, bringing them to these places like us here today at Kiesel Town United Methodist Church. I want to thank you all uh, for coming. It's a blessing. Some of you all have been coming for years. I think we have one dancer here who it's your first year here at Kiesel Town United Methodist Church, and we're glad that you're here. But some of you have been coming two, five years longer than that to us and other places doing this work, and we're, we're so thankful. Um, this wrestling with God, our church, Kiesel Town United Methodist Church, we're in a season of 40 days where we're wrestling with God for 40 days in prayer as we think about the Jacob stories. And one of the things we're doing is we're listening for God. God, for this time, how do you want us to grow and make disciples of people who we know and are part of our church, but also for people outside of our church and our community who don't have a church home? who don't know Jesus, who don't have a place to worship or go and serve and grow. Lord, in this time, how would you have us make disciples and reach out to our community? So we're waiting, we're listening, we're praying. Um, I share that even with our visitors because these are good things to do all the time, to listen and pray, God, how would you have us build up people in their faith in the church and outside of the church in the grace of God? Uh, couple things we're using in our Pray Every Day resource, which is in the bulletin this morning. There's some questions from one of our bishops, Bishop Will Willeman. There are questions that would be good for any church to consider, and I commend that to you. Um, as we listen, we have some notebooks, and they're in the back of the church by the stained glass window. There's some notebooks our youth decorated in their youth Sunday school class. If you want to take a notebook just to journal and write down things that God might be wrestling with in your church, or Kieseltown, you haven't gotten one yet, grab one of those. And we also have a little compass to remind us, to point us to the direction of what God's doing in this time, and to point us to Christ, put our eyes on Jesus, for what Jesus is already doing in the church and in our neighborhood, so we can hitch on to what Jesus is doing. But for all of our visitors, uh, I know you're probably going back to your other churches soon, but if you want to take a notebook and a compass to remind you and help pray for your church and you in this time, I'd invite you to take those things as well. Um, but Kieseltown United Methodist Church, let's not be afraid to wrestle with God and go together in what God wants us to do, even in this time. In our story in Genesis 32, um, Jacob is getting ready to wrestle. Uh, he's getting ready for a tussle with his brother Esau. Um, he struggled with his brother Esau his whole life. If you all don't know Jacob, they're fraternal twins. Esau comes out first, and Jacob is holding on to Esau's heel as they're being pulled out of the womb. Uh, Jacob wrestles Esau's birthright away by trading him a bowl of soup for his birthright. It's Jacob who will dress up like his brother Esau to fool his father Isaac into giving to Jacob the blessing that was meant for Esau. Esau hears about this, and Esau wants to kill his brother. So Jacob has to flee, and he leaves like a refugee. Well, years and years later, Jacob is coming back home. Uh, when Jacob left, God got a hold of him in a dream. And God said to Jacob, I will be with you wherever you go. I will bless you. Like your great-grandfather Abraham, I'm going to make a covenant with you that I'll multiply your family. And I'm not just going to bless your family, but through your family, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed with the grace and the knowledge and salvation of God. They're going to see it through your family. And Jacob, I'm going to bring you home. And I'm going to do these things. Well, God's bringing Jacob home. God's called Jacob to head home. But Esau is still waiting there. And Jacob sent messengers. Esau, I'm coming home. And the messengers have said, Esau's heard about it, Jacob. And Esau's bringing 400 men with him. Now when you hear anyone like Abraham or Esau, when they have these fighting men or 400 men, think of a small army, like their troops are coming. And this is what Jacob is facing. Jacob won't just be facing his brother, 
who's wanted to kill him in the past, but Jacob coming with 400 trained men are coming along with him. So Jacob makes his preparations. He gets gifts for Esau. He prays to the God of Abraham and Isaac. At this time, Jacob doesn't pray my God. He prays the God of Abraham and Isaac, his grandfather and his father. Jacob sends his family across, and he spends the night by himself. I'm I'm sure he's anxious. And while he's getting ready to wrestle with Esau, it's someone else who shows up. The narrator in Genesis says, A man wrestled with Jacob all through the night. So we don't know exactly who the identity is of who wrestles with Jacob. It's not till later in the story and later through the night that maybe Jacob even knows who he's wrestling with. He names the place Peniel. He says, I saw the face of God. It was the living God, the God of Abraham and Isaac, who came and wrestled with me all night long. And Jacob says, I saw God face to face. I think Jacob probably not only saw God's face, he probably saw like the crook of his elbow and maybe his armpit and maybe held onto his foot while he was wrestling with God, God all night. When Jacob is worried and anxious and by himself in fearing his brother Esau coming, is my brother going to come and kill me or are we going to finally reconcile? What is the future? He doesn't know. A lot of it's out of his hands. He's vulnerable. He's out in the wilderness. God shows up, and God grabs a hold of Jacob in the night and fights with him. I don't know if you usually think of God doing this. Sometimes we may think of God who comes and comforts, or God who's going to come and take care of the problem on our behalf. Here's God who comes and fights and struggles and wrestles with Jacob in the middle of the night. Um, This is the God that Diedrich Bonhoeffer talks about. Diedrich Bonhoeffer was that German Lutheran who opposed the Nazi party and Hitler um, and ended up in a Gestapo prison. And, And he died in that place. But Diedrich Bonhoeffer, when he writes about who Jesus is, he says, it's Christ. We're made in Christ. Christ is part of making us in creation. It's through Christ that we're reconciled to God. It's through Christ that we are connected to family and community and neighbor and church. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he shares this idea. Christ is between us and every other person and every other relationship we will ever have. So when you see someone before you, whether it's your your spouse or, or your son or daughter or a best friend, whether it's your enemy, whether it's someone you're in conflict with, between you and that person is Jesus Christ, the Lord of creation, the one who rules over all, Christ who comes and gets in the middle of us. When Jacob is worried about wrestling Esau, it's God who comes and wrestles with him in the night. If there's someone that you're struggling with right now, if there's someone that you're wrestling with for for good things, maybe like we're going to dance together and do ministry, or in difficult things, it may be that God is also entering the wrestling and the struggling and inviting you to tussle a little bit with the living God, even with Jesus Christ who comes. Um, I believe that when we learn how to wrestle and struggle with God, God not only comes alongside us to be with us, but as God shows us how God treats us and how God holds us and how God would bless us and direct us, we learn how to interact with those that we would wrestle with for for good things or even in conflict. When there is someone across from you, chances are, They're either someone God has brought into your life to bless you and to build you up. They may be someone God has brought into your life so that you can bless them with the grace and mercy of God, even as you have been blessed. Between everyone that we meet is Jesus Christ, is what Diedrich Bonhoeffer would encourage us to think about. 
And I believe that once we know how to wrestle with God and know that God is with us, we'll be ready for just about anything. Jacob, how Jacob responds. He sneak attacked by God in the middle of the night. He recognizes after wrestling all night, I'm not wrestling with Esau right now. I'm not even just struggling with myself. I'm holding on to God in this place. There's a place where God even says, morning's coming, Jacob. You got that big meeting with Esau later. Are you ready to quit? God promised to be with Jacob to bring him all the way home. And Jacob's home. And Jacob, to this point, has said, God, if you do what you say, if you're with me, if you bring me home, if you bless me, then you can be my God. It's always been an if, a little bit at an arm's length. He's home, warning's coming, and Jacob says, I'm not letting go of you, God. I'm, I, I don't, Esau can wait, the other things can wait. God, I don't want to go one more step without you. I realize you've been blessing me, you've been with me these last years, through all my sojourn, through my marrying my wives, through my getting my children. I realize you're the one who's blessing me. God, I know you said you'd be, be with me this far, but I want to be with you for all the steps that come after this. God, I'm holding on to you until you bless me. And Jacob realizes who he's dealing with with God. He, he can't manipulate God. He can't get God's name there. But he can receive what God is giving. And God gives Jacob a new name. We know it is Israel. Uh, God touches Jacob in an interesting way. He touches his hip. He, he cripples him. You may ask if God plays fair, wrestles fair. Maybe not. Maybe not to get a hold of us and to hold on to us. Uh, Jacob will go from this place and never walk the same again. He'll have a limp wherever he goes, and we'll hear he has a staff at other places, and he'll lean on his staff in other parts of the story. Um, and wherever he goes, he'll always have this mark in just how he walks, that he has wrestled with God, but also that he never let go, and he held on for God's blessing, not just for that moment, for, but for every step that came after that. When Jacob goes to face Esau, he doesn't suddenly have a huge army behind him. God doesn't wipe out the 400 men who are coming with Esau. It's not kind of that thing. Jacob goes forward for the people he, he will meet being touched by God's grace and God's presence and God going with him. The God who goes with us, whatever is before us, and will lift us up in God's mercy and salvation. Today, We've got In Motion, Summer Praise Dance, and they're going to tell us more stories and dance about the God who is with us. With Esther, when a holocaust was coming on the Jewish people, and God raises up Esther, is with her to be a blessing to the Jewish people and the people of the land to keep them from that slaughter. How God is with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the fiery furnace, not keeping them from the adversity, but keeping being there with them, like Daniel in the lion's den. God being there all night long with Peter as he walked out on the water to Jesus and was overcome by the wind and the waves. Jesus who lifted him up even in the midst of the storm. They're going to dance more of these stories of the God who is with us in everything, in adversity, with his grace to lead us, the question for us that I would invite us to, the challenge to wrestle with this living God, to hold on to God for God's blessing and grace that we may walk in God's light and salvation. I'd like to invite Elena. She's going to come and share us with us about the group. And then everybody get ready because this is a blessing every year, and I'm so looking forward to this year. Elena, come and share with us about this year. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us this morning. Um, Pastor Joel just introduced that pretty well. We are going to present um, four Bible stories to you, um, and our hope and prayer is to visually show how God was in each of those stories with um, those people who are in the Bible. And, um, and then we're going to end with um, just a 
two pieces of worship. One, it's always been you, just our recognition of the fact that God was in with um, each of those people in the past. And then finally, an affirmation of our trust that God will continue to be with us in the future. So we just pray you are blessed this morning and get to experience these Bible stories in a new way and leave with a renewed trust that God will always be with us. Our first story is that of Esther, who found herself in an unfamiliar place and with the choice to step up to help her people or to stand back and know they were suffering. From the fourth chapter of Esther, then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Along with the characters Esther and Haman in this dance, you will also see three emotions. Loyalty, overthinking, and betrayal. Emotions that she feels while her head spins around the thought of what God would want her to do versus what man would want her to do.
I got so pulled in, I almost <laughs> forgot I was reading. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Our next story is that of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were ordered to bow down to an image of King Nebuchadnezzar. When they were questioned why they would not do so, they replied to the king, We do not need to defend ourselves before you in this manner. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Though the circumstances of Daniel were slightly different than that of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in that King Darius did not want harm to come to Daniel for praying to God, Daniel also found himself trapped and in danger, and once again God was there in the pit with him. From the sixth chapter of Daniel, My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty.
In the New Testament, we now explore Peter's faith as he walks on water towards Jesus in the storm. Jesus commanded him to have faith, but when he faltered, Jesus was right there. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? In these stories, and so many others in scripture, God shows up in unique and exciting ways. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Deuteronomy 31, 8. And I know as the, as the girls are changing, as they prepared for this worship set, 
They had to move from the knowledge that God had been present in all of these stories of the past to the realization that God is an ever-present part of their own lives, guiding their steps, illuminating their steps. And as the next song says, it has always been you, God. And I pray that this message is made clear for you in their next dance. Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 
This final dance is our proc proclamation of trust that as we move through our lives, we trust that God is with us, seen and unseen, and he will be in our stories every step of the way. Wow. <laughs> what a blessing. I saw you all do things you've never done before in that one. Never seen Elena dance before in these things. Uh, saw Grace's big muscles in this one lifting people up. Praise God. Um, some of you seen you dancing since you were some of the first ones, young ones, and growing up and just growing in your skills and everything. And, and just the stories of the the grace of God with us and all the ways you all did it with, with banners and scarves and everything. I love the dancing lions. It was great. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Let's give them a hand. Yeah.
Amen. Amen. We're going to go to our time of prayer this morning. Um, I'd like to lead us off with a prayer by Dietrich Bonhoeffer that he wrote, and it's in his letters from prison. Um, but we're going to lift up a time if we want to lift up things we're thankful for to God or things we want to pray and intercede for today. And then we'll close together with the Lord's Prayer. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, I call to you early in the morning. Help me pray and collect my thoughts. I cannot do so alone. In me it is dark, but with you there is light. I am lonely, but you do not abandon me. I am faint-hearted, but from you comes my help. I am restless, but with you is peace. In me is bitterness, but with you is patience. I do not understand your ways, but you know the right way for me. Lord Jesus Christ, you were poor and miserable, imprisoned and abandoned as I am. You know all human need. You remain with me when no human being stands by me. You do not forget me and you seek me. You want me to recognize you and turn back to you. Lord, I hear your call and follow. Help me. Holy Spirit, grant me the faith that saves from despair and vice. Grant me the love for God and others that purges all hate and bitterness. Grant me the hope that frees me from fear and despondency. Teach me to discern Jesus Christ and to do his will. Lord, we thank you that you are the God who comes and wrestles with us. Lord, give us grace to hold on to you and to learn from you, Lord Jesus, and how we would handle all the people you set before us to bless them, Lord, as you've called us to be a blessing. Lord, we lift up today our, our thanksgivings and our praises out loud and in our hearts, for you have been so good to us. Lord, every good gift comes from you, and we thank you for these that we've named in our hearts and out loud. Lord, but we also turn to you for the needs in our world, in our community, and the church. Lord, for we know that you are gracious and have compassion for all. Lord, we pray today for the sick, for your healing mercy. We pray for those who are dying, Lord, for your comfort. We pray for those who are grieving, Lord, that you come alongside them and lift them up. Lord, we pray for places where there is war and strife. Lord, we ask for your peace. Lord, we ask for where there is hunger and poverty. Lord, we ask for your provision and the sharing of the good fruit of the earth. Lord, we pray for those who don't know God, who are needing grace and faith. Lord, reach out to them with your mercy and Holy Spirit and move us to share and proclaim the witness of what we have seen in your goodness and grace. Lord, we lift up these and the other needs that we see and that we carry today silently and out loud. Lord, we thank you that you are the God that hears and the God that who is with us and the God who comes to save. Lord, pour out today your forgiveness, your salvation, your provision, your healing, your reconciliation, Lord, on these needs that we have lifted up. And let us pray together as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward this morning. It's time to worship God with our tithes and our offerings. Uh, if you're worshiping at home and want to give, you can always use the Tithely app for giving, or you can always mail in gifts as well. Let's worship God today with our giving. Lord, we thank you for all the good gifts you have given us, uh, not least of all yourself, for the gift of friends and family and food, for the church, Lord, for dance and joy and faith. Lord, as we bring our tithes and offerings today, Lord, bless them to be a blessing to our community and to the world. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymnal, closing hymn, is in the hymnal, and we're going to sing, Be Thou My Vision, and I'm looking for it, is it 451? 451? Well, let's stand and sing together.
Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.